The Holy Gospel according to John in the first verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through Him. And without Him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone who was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God who were born not of blood, or of the will of flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart who has made him known. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. There's two places where you find these three words in the beginning. And if it sounded familiar to you, good, because that's how Genesis starts, doesn't it? In the beginning. And that's how John chooses to open his gospel, in the beginning. And those are the kind of words you see that all of a sudden are kind of appropriate because we're just starting into a new year in 2016. And I heard on the news, one of those new news clips, that a uh, measurement was taken among a thousand people uh, last year of those who made New Year's resolutions. And by April, 92% uh, quit. 8% made it to midsummer, 1% made it to the end of the year. Why do we do this to ourselves? <laughs> because we want something different. We want something that we didn't have in the previous year. And I don't think there's a better way than in these three beginning words of Genesis in the beginning, and also this morning in God, John's Gospel, the beginning was the word. In the beginning is really supposed to be part of who we are. That's why we do that brief order of confession and forgiveness before we start the service. It's to bring ourselves into the presence of God and saying, this was this past week, and I need to talk to you about it. We need to discuss this, you and I, God, and I need to know that I can start all over again. And it is as if God, at that moment of forgiveness, says, in the beginning, it's all new. It's all starting all over again. And that means for everything that has ever happened to us throughout the year, uh, the things that we hold on to, the things that gave us pain, the things, the things that gave us even great joy. It's all part of who we are. For those of you or us who have lost somebody, at that time when it happens, it goes in the beginning, there was loss. And the Gospel's promise is it doesn't have to stay that way. That today you can change that to something like, in the beginning, I see it more clearly. For some people, it will be the joy of having the birth of the first child. And for those of us who have gone through it, especially on that first child, in the beginning, there was chaos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and the second child comes along and goes, in the beginning, this is easy. <laughs> Our lives are full of in the beginnings, aren't they, in so many different ways. Um, I, when I first came here to St. Luke, it was on this particular Sunday. It marks the end of four years, the beginning of five. And as I stood here four years ago, I thought to myself, well, this is the beginning. <laughs> I don't know them, and they don't know me. But yet there's a pattern of familiarity as we do get to know each other and come to worship with each other. And it's almost as if, oh, there was a beginning and now we're full-fledged into it. Yeah, in a way, that's true. But I think in everything else we do, it's good to look upon what we're walking into into a new year, not just by some type of resolution that, you know, we have heartily made. We think, oh, this is how it's going to be in the beginning. But it could be something radically different even when we say those words in the beginning. For the choir, every time we pick up a new piece of music, it's in the beginning. And we work through the various parts. Um, for a, a liturgy, for example, we're going to rehearse you uh, during announcement time on a new sanctus we're going to sing. And you're going to look at it and say, what is it? And we're going to say, in the beginning. But by the time we're through and we get to Lent, it won't be in the beginning anymore. It'll be part of your life you'll know where you're going. I think one of the clearest, most difficult things is to kind of look off into the future and say, this year is going to be different. But I think the truthful thing that we need to say to ourselves and even to each other in great patience is, in the beginning, this is what we plan to do. And in the beginning, it may not be difficult, and somehow during the year, it may not even work out. But in all of that, in the beginning is how Genesis starts and how John starts in the beginning. It has a start point. But for us who come here every Sunday and as we stand back and face the baptism plum, remembering that water was poured over our heads, that was also in the beginning. And so when every time we take our hands out and take the bread, it is as if Christ is saying and God is saying, in the beginning is right now doesn't have to be any other time but right now. In the beginning, I come to you. This is a start, something new, something wonderful. And today, as, as we look into 2016, I'm sure of anything these days when we listen to the news, there has to be something that overcomes what we see in the world. Somehow a word of God that says, in the beginning, God created. And in John's Gospel, in the beginning was the word. And on today, in the new year, in the beginning, this is how we may think, despite what's going on. In the beginning, we didn't know each other, and then we did. In the beginning, we loved people, and then we lost them. In the beginning, we felt pain. There are so many beginnings that happen over and over again. The real question is, as those new beginnings start, what do you want to hold on to the most? Whose promise do you want to hold on to? Your own? Doesn't look that way according to statistics. Our promises of New Year's resolutions don't work out so well. But the real question to the answer of this is, is there a new beginning? And that's what the Gospel speaks about today. In the beginning, not just then, but now. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that beginning starts every day, and maybe especially now as we start a new year. I don't know what's going to happen, and you don't either. But there's something incredibly beautiful and wonderful about this whole text this morning. Hmm. We saw his glory, glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And somehow, maybe at that one moment in our time in the beginning, we'll say, I understand this better this year. In the beginning of this new year, I understand who I am better than I did last year. In the beginning of this new year, I can probably say to myself, there is something that I really, really want to do, and I'm not going to try to pull this off by myself. For in the beginning, I know that if I start this, and I hold on to the God who makes promises to me, that somehow I will work through this. It will happen in the beginning, over and over again. Take it into your heart, walk out of this church with, say to yourself, in the beginning, I am starting something brand new today. I don't care what the past was. I don't care how I failed because
because that's all in the past. And I just said at the beginning of this service, I can hear that word of forgiveness. Do I dare to begin again? Sure you do. Why not? Every world, every person has had to hear this over and over again. Can I do this? And it may not be that you'll accomplish it all that good, but every evening, every Sunday when we come here, every time we stand up and say, ah, we haven't done that well this week, and the God of all ages looks at us and says, you know what? Try these three words. Right now, it's the beginning. That gives us an awful lot of hope, doesn't it? That gives us an opportunity to walk out and say, no matter how bad it was, this is a new beginning. And so, those words of John's Gospel, that prologue that rings out all through the centuries, one of the most beloved, by the way, starts in the beginning. And here we are. As if nothing else ever happened, despite what you remember, despite what you wish you couldn't remember, today, is in the beginning day, fresh out of the gospel, Old Testament and new. Hang on to the words, everybody. It's a whole new start. It's a whole new in the beginning, right now, for every one of us. Let's hold on to that. There's a lot coming this year, and maybe each Sunday is a new beginning Sunday. And when we do that, we hold on to something not of our own, but belongs to God. Because as the word became flesh and lived among us, we saw his glory, the glory as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Hmm. The law was given by Moses. Oh, that's the tough one, because that's the one we break when we do our confession. And then comes the good part. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. That's what the beginning is all about. Hang on tight, everybody. Nobody knows what's coming up this year. Just remember those three words in the beginning. And know that after those words always comes grace and truth. Forgiveness and reconciliation, not just with God, but maybe the possibility where we think it doesn't exist between us and other people. It's something to pray really hard for, especially in a world that doesn't want a new beginning. It wants to continue in warring ways. We are the people that have to hold on to that word and say, in the beginning, we believe something else. We believe in the possibility that love can win, that love is not a cheat, and that somehow compassion of how God sees us and forgives us, gives us a brand new beginning.